Hello and welcome. I'm just setting up a new system that I've bought that will hopefully get me into the Q0100 satellite. I, this is the first time I've actually set this gear up. I'll go through the gear in a bit more detail. Today's aim is to just receive the satellite and then the next stage will be to try and transmit and receive into the satellite. So I'm here at Keele University which is not far from where my office is based. This is a great location because it's quite high up. I'm away from the surrounding houses where I live and it allows me to try and get this satellite dish pointing at the right uh, in the right direction at the, and at the right uh, inclination as well. So I'll just walk you through the initial setup and then we'll put the radio on together and we'll see what we can hear. Okay, so let me just um, bring you around. So at the heart of this system is the DX Patrol Q0100 ground station and that's currently just We're waiting to get a GPS lock onto that. So it's the um, DX Patrol Q0100 ground station. Um, and I've also, with that, I, I also purchased the Q0100 LMB and then also the, um, the, the antenna for that as well. Uh, and there's the RF socket for the for the transmit part of it. So the LMB that's the receive part of this system, and then this outer bit is the for the trans transmit. Now I'm very very new to I'm very new to actually doing two way comms on satellites. On previous videos, I've I've done quite a bit on the satnogs, and so I've got a little bit of experience to do with satellites but this is a whole different ball game with working the Q0100 in the fact that it actually offers a, a fixed uh, it's a fixed position in the sky don't need to move the dish around you need to position the dish in the right place uh, to be able to receive and transmit uh, this is a sat gear beam 60 I'm hoping that this 60 centimeter dish is the right type of dish and that it um, allows me to receive and transmit into the into the into the satellite so let's uh, and then I'm also using the IC705 um, to uh, use as the IF uh, radio for it. This is the actual um, RS signal coming in and out of the antenna and then if you come down to here um, at the back of this we have let me just get that into view uh, we have a, a GPS which is up on top of the vehicle up there uh, and then we have the signal. This goes to the radio of the IF um, is IF radio there's a power uh, it's just powered it's just powered off this battery for the moment so it looks as if that has locked the GP GPS has locked it has its own internal 10 megahertz reference signal as well just to keep everything just to keep everything sort of locked in so it doesn't drift so much especially if you're working portable I guess what I have to do on the radio is use the 70 centimeter band on the IF radio because the the DX portable ground station handles a lot of the tra transverter malarkey trans um, transverting from the 70s up to two um, you know 2.4 gig and then 10 gigahertz for the for the down um, so this is what we've got so far let me just bring this out And then we need to bring this, I'll just bring this down to there, down to SSB. Right, 
Right, so I'm, I'm picking up the beacons, um, which which means that it's 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 working but the the signal coming in is really weak now the idea with the QR 100 is all the other signals use the well the beacon as a reference the beacon should be the strongest signal coming from the transponder uh, everybody else is meant to keep their uh, signal strength below that so I'm picking up the beacons relatively weakly which means that all the other signals like the SSB signals especially will be probably below the noise floor not the noise floor is about an S1 S2 here or maybe S3 um, so it's not ideal because uh, we have got a lot of buildings nearby I, I'm just going to tweak the inclination a little bit to see if that makes a difference but we've got um, we've got these trees be behind the camera which might be attenuating the signal um, the 10 gigahertz signal uh, it might be that the dish isn't an ideal dish for this type of operation I don't know uh, I'm, uh, any comments below I bought I bought two um, 70 ohm cables with the F-type connectors on each uh, from R RS components but the, they're just cheap it's just really poor quality and I've really struggled I've had to cut one of the ends off and, and put on a new connector because it wasn't going into the back of the uh, the the ground station it wasn't making it a strong connection that might be the problem that I've got today is that I need to replace two of these uh, two of these cables going to the ground station um, Bob's going to play about a bit more, try and get the inc inclination changed a bit. Um, and yeah, I'm going to try and see if I can make an improvement to the, the strength of the signal coming in. Just about here, FT8. This is now the radio box. So, there should be no excuse for not being able to cobble something together. No excuse. What I've learned so far <clears throat> is that you need to get really high quality um, coax and connectors first thing. The QO100 ground station takes a lot of the hassle of having to build up your own system with a transverter and amplifiers and power supply. It comes handy in one box. What I have learned though about the, the ground station is that it does not give you um, duplex. Um, with the QO100 it's, it's, very, it's different than just speaking in simplex between two HF stations. It actually uses a transponder system where you beam into it and it beams straight out on a different frequency. That means that a you've got to main you've got to limit your power because you don't want to over uh, overdrive the front end because you can't go up there and fix it. So you need to be able to monitor 
your signal strength as it's received by the by the, the satellite so you need to have some way of monitoring not so much the audio but the signal strength with the track with this ground station it only really gives you um, a transmit or receive it hasn't got the circuitry to do both the in fact it shares some of the circuitry so that is a downside to this station however in majority of locations you can get your phone out and go on to the uh, Goo and Hilly web SDR and see a signal strength there's even a signal strength plot meter on there if you stretch it out you can look at the plot meter however if you haven't got 4G access especially in my case where I'll be working portable nearly all of the time I'm either limited to having a 4G area or having a second setup for the receive which pretty much makes part of this um, ground station redundant yeah that's not that's not good so there's still some work to do on truly off-grid type of comms with this however from getting it out of the box powering it up plugging the cables in getting the GPS locked in um, pointing the dish trial and error I mean it surprised a few millimeters difference can make to the signal strength but if it works for an idiot like me with the amount of patience that I've got and time that I've got for this hobby um, actually it's working quite nicely so the next step for, not for today for another day the next step is to try and transmit and monitor the signal and see if I can get a transmission into the a satellite and then fingers crossed make my first contact thank you for watching it's a short video but it's just a little bit of a introduction to a slightly new direction for the channel so thanks for watching and i look forward to the next video so bye bye for now